life, love, and pop pop culture. Hi guys, my name is Danielle Delgado. I'm Tracy Chapoff, and you're watching Life, Love, and Pop Culture. I'm so excited that you're here with me because I'm a really big fan of the Bachelor franchise. Great, I'm glad to be here too. <laughs> So I want to know what encouraged you to do this crazy journey to find love on The Bachelor? Yeah, um, honestly, I had never really watched the show prior to going on or applying. I applied myself. Um, I was just sitting online one day and I think something like for it popped up. I was like, this could be an interesting experience. I didn't really think that it would actually come to fruition, um, but I applied thinking that it would be fun and interesting, and honestly, I've been dating for a really long time, and <laughs> I figured it couldn't be any worse than what I had already been experiencing, yeah. so I figured I'd give it a shot, and, and it happened. I mean, I've definitely had really good dates, I've had really bad dates, everything in between, but um, I've had some really long-term relationships, but nothing's worked, so kind of, yeah, you know, I wanted to see see what else could give me the opportunity to meet someone that could be right for me. Yeah. You never know. You guys all seem to fall in love with the same guy. How does that work? I don't think everyone fell in love with him. <laughs> yeah. um, I think that, obviously, when we're being chosen or casted, there are different personality qualities that they obviously see in us that would match Colton, for instance. And, you know, everyone has something that maybe in life you have a crossover probably. And I think that's how we're chosen. So there's something in common that I would say like I had with Colton. We definitely had fashion in common, which we talked about a lot. And there were definitely a ton of other things, but I think that's kind of where it lies. There's always some kind of crossover that people seem to be able to find and connect with. And then once you're in that environment and it's so focused, it, it heightens your emotions for yeah. sure. So a lot of people will say that they grew from this process mm -hmm. or they've learned a lot about themselves. Yeah. What would you say that you've learned about yourself or how did you grow as a person? Um, I think I went into it really open-minded, but I also, assumed that I was a really great dater and I know how to talk to people really well and I started finding out that I was actually a lot more closed off um, in certain areas that I didn't realize and so sitting there trying to be really open and honest and vulnerable is hard and I realized it was definitely more difficult for me um, to talk about really personal stuff uh, than I knew so yeah I think I kind of took away from that being able to work on opening up to people that I would like to obviously have a future with and s let them see those parts of me. People got to know Tracy on the show mm -hmm. or they got to know your heart a little bit, but what do you want them to remember you for or what would you like to tell fans that you know they didn't really get a chance to see on the show? Um, I would like people to know that I definitely have a goofier personality than I think you saw me a little bit more serious on TV because I was taking it serious and I was pretty emotional <laughs> which I have but I, I don't know I'm someone that's happy and carefree and I work really hard and I have a great group of friends and family and I mean those are things I want people to know about me and not just that I'm this emotional girl <laughs> looking for love. Obviously you want everyone to see your personality as a whole and not just one bit of you, which is, I mean, that's hard when obviously you're on camera for a short period of time. Well, aside from your bachelor days, you're a stylist. You're really yeah. successful in that industry. So I want to know how you got involved in that. Of course. Um, it was definitely, it was a long road. <laughs> it's not something I just jumped right into. Um, I grew up around fashion. My one of my grandmothers was an amazing seamstress and designer, so she taught me how to sew. And then um, I had decided that I wanted to go to college for fashion design. Mm -hmm. So I did that through school, came out of that, moved to New York, and I was working in design for um, like a licensing company. And then pretty quickly, one of my friends told me that uh, Kohl's, the department store, was looking um, for basically trend um, like trend forecasters essentially in their design studio in New York and it was very new at the time it was not something I knew that much about or knew that it was such a big career path so I was like why not let's give it a shot yeah 
not a path I ever thought that I would take. I solely thought I would only be designing, start my own line eventually, and that's kind of the only vision I had. And then I went to interview for this job, got it very quickly, and worked for them for about three years doing all of the trend for accessories. Um, so basically, you know, you would just you research and work with the design teams, and it was really cool. Then I left the company, went interned at a magazine for a summer, and that's kind of how styling started to trickle in. I was working a lot that whole summer with their uh, like style editor and went on all these photo shoots and I like really fell in love with it. But then there was not a job opportunity for me at the end of the summer with this magazine. So by accident, I applied to work for Sam Edelman, the shoe company. And I thought it was a position in their office. Come to find out it was actually for their retail store. They were just opening in New York. And I told Sam after they basically offered me the position, I didn't want to work in their store and I wanted a job in their office with the design team. So I forced it upon him and he had me do a little trial run for about a week, I think. And I realized they didn't have a fashion department doing trend or fashion or anything. So I basically presented a job to him that I wanted that didn't really exist, <laughs> told him that I wanted to run their fashion department. Um, and his wife was just about to come back to work as well. So her and I basically started up this fashion department um, for the company. Yes, yeah, so I ended up working for him for three years, doing all of the fashion direction, uh, working with the designers on the shoes, doing all of the, working with the licensing on all of their like lifestyle products, because they started all of this other with clothes and accessories. And then after three years, I kind of was ready to move on. And I knew that styling was a, what I really wanted to do. And I was at a weird place. My I had been in a really long-term relationship that I was a uh, boyfriend I was living with. And it had come to an end. So I was kind of just in New York with no, there was nothing holding me there anymore. My sister had moved. My best friend had moved. And I saw a lot of friends there, but I, I needed a change. So I decided to come to LA for a month and test it out, see if I wanted to move. I reached out to a bunch of stylists that I had researched who I really liked them or their clientele or their aesthetic and just started you know, putting feelers out there. I got um, feedback from them very quickly and I just kind of moved. <laughs> okay, so before I let you go, can it be next bachelorette? Mm -hmm. Thoughts? Um, I think that she's going to make a very, very fun, interesting season. Uh, I'm not sure that we've seen a bachelorette like her before. She's definitely very quirky and has a personality of her own. I don't really think that she allows people to mold her in any certain way. Um, so yeah, I think that she's going to make for an interesting, <laughs> an interesting bachelorette that like, I don't really, we don't know what to expect from her, I think. Yeah. So she should be fun to watch. How is she off camera? She's a really nice girl. Yeah. She's she's fun to be around. She's really nice. Um, honestly, I feel like I didn't get to spend as much time with her as maybe some of the other girls did. But from what I got being around her, she is a really nice, genuine person who I do think is looking for love and just, you know, she's out there to find her person. I want to know a little secret from this whole process. What is something that fans don't get to see or don't really know about the show? So obviously, I think everyone knows we're mic'd majority of the time. Obviously, while we're awake, they want us to have mics on. And I would definitely try to sneak around it when I when I could, any way that I could potentially not be, so I could sneak in little conversations with some of the girls that I was friends with um, without obviously having that on there, which is really hard to get away with. <laughs> But I would, I would definitely try to get away with it every now and then. <laughs> I definitely got in trouble, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. People want to hear everything. You know? They do. I mean, that's the whole point of being on the show. But yeah, every now and then, you know, you want to have a conversation with your girlfriends without people hearing it. So I would try to sneak around it when I could. <laughs> well, thank you so much for this. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. It's such a nice time talking to you. Thank you. And thank you guys so much for watching. And don't forget to tune in next time as we discuss more life, love, and pop culture.
life, love, and pop pop culture. If you enjoyed my interview, subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to look out for new videos.